Okay. <laughs> she makes the cat wear a spit. That's great. Okay. <laughs> Okay, let us begin our metta meditation. May all beings be happy and secure. May all beings have happy minds. Whatever living beings there may be, without exception, weak or strong, long, large, medium, short, subtle or gross, visible or invisible, living near or far, born or coming to birth, may all beings have happy minds, let no one deceive another, nor despise anyone anywhere, neither from anger nor ill will, should anyone wish harm to another, as a mother would risk her own life to protect her only child, even so towards all living beings, one should cultivate a boundless heart, one should cultivate for all the world, a heart of boundless loving friendliness, above, below, and all around, unobstructed, without hate or resentment, whether standing, walking, sitting, lying down, or whenever awake. One should develop this mindfulness, this is called divinely dwelling here, not falling into erroneous views, but virtuous and endowed with vision, removing desire from sensual pleasures, one comes never again to birth in the womb. With this wonderful metta thought, let us begin our mindfulness practice. We pay total attention to our breath without using words, but let Mindfulness be there. Mindfulness is paying attention without greed, hatred, or delusion. Just to see, just necessary to see the true nature of what is happening. So when we pay attention to the breath, we notice the breath is touching the nostrils, expanding our chest area, and expanding our lower abdominal area as we are breathing in. As we breathe out, our lower abdomen contracts, the chest area contracts, and the breath leaves our nostrils. We feel that. As we breathe in and out, paying attention, also we notice a very brief pause between inhaling and exhaling. And notice that without trying to manipulate the breath or the pause between breaths, let them happen as they happen and simply be aware of it. When you try to use words, you miss all these nitty-gritty details in your experience. As we keep paying attention like this and breathe in and out, we notice the feeling that arises together with inhaling, perception, thoughts, and consciousness arising with inhaling, arising, passing away with inhaling. Similarly, as we ex exhale, these feelings, perception, thought, and volitional formations and consciousness also change and disappear. They appear and disappear much faster than we breathe because they have their own nature, <clears throat> not related to the breath, but also only when we breathe, we notice that. 
As we notice that we find there is not any simple uh, thing, a single thing that uh, stays or hold or fixed all are moving, changing, and therefore there is nothing to hold on to as they are changing all the time. The mind is changing, all the objects, all the feelings change. And then arises the very important uh, mental state that of letting go of whatever goes away. That is how the greed or as a hindrance fades away. Then we notice that there is nothing to resent because we are mindful. With mindfulness we breathe in and out. And this is what we hear even in the four foundations of mindfulness, overcoming covetousness and grief. Abhijja Dhormana Sang. And Vinaya Loke Abhijja Dhormana Sang. These are the words we use in the discourse. Loke in this world, Abhijja is greed, Dhormana is grief or disappointment. We let them go. And then in that place, there arise a sense of a feeling of metta. <clears throat> and then as we keep paying attention, our compassion becomes very prominent because we know that there are many suffering beings and we want to share merits with them and wish them to be relieved from that suffering. There arises compassion and restlessness and worry fade away. And then seeing this, mind becomes more active and sleepiness and drowsiness fade away. Seeing all this, we gain confidence that the practice brings positive, wholesome results. Then doubt fades away. Thus all the hindrances fade away. Then joy, happiness and concentration arise in this order. When we gain concentration, we can use that concentra concentration to reflect back on the subtlest changes taking place in our body, feelings, perceptions, thoughts, and consciousness. As they change, we, the body becomes calm, relaxed, and peaceful. The breath becomes calm, relaxed, and peaceful. Mind becomes calm, relaxed, and peaceful. Concentration becomes very strong, very clear. And we see the subtlest changes taking place in our aggregates. With this experience, we continue our practice, seeing things as they really are. Here things are these aggregates as they really are mean they are changing and seeing these changes, paying total attention, we stay in our practice.
दुख पता च निदुख भय पता च निभय शोक पता च निशोक हम तो सबे पिपानिनो मे द सफरिंग बी फ्री फ्रॉम सफरिंग मे द फियर स्ट्रक बी फ्री फ्रॉम फियर मे द ग्रीविंग बी फ्री फ्रॉम ग्रीफ सो टू मे ऑल बींग्स बी विद दिस मेथा प्रैक्टिस वी वॉन्ट टू कंटिन्यू आवर मॉर्निंग सेशन एंसरिंग क्वेश्चन द there is one question which uh, my friend will read right now while i'm answering this question if you have more questions you may post them on the chat box while listening to this and then i can answer them uh, people might have been very enlightened uh, that they don't have too many questions today <laughs> there's only one question so uh, anyway let me answer that question and you read it Bhante, please forgive my pronunciation. Half of this question is not in English. Uh-huh. So maybe you'll help all of us uh, yeah. to understand the question as lo- uh, along with the answer. Uh, this uh, question is in regards to feelings outside and feelings inside. Mm-hmm. Bhante, kindly correct me if I am wrong. Is it wrong to see feelings outside as indriya, pati, bada, vedana, such as ka, uh, chaku, sampasaja, vedana, sota, sampasana, sampasaja, vedana, etc. Feelings inside as anindriya, pati, bada, vedana, that happens in meditation, when there are no pancha niwarana in the mind nakama sita vedana <laughs> <laughs> you did quite well yeah, thank you mate thank you. it was a struggle <laughs> indriya patibhadya vedana uh, indriya patibhadya patibhadya vedana such as Saku Sampasida Vedana, Sodha Sampasida Vedana, uh, etc. Feeling inside as uh, Anindriya Patibhadda Vedana that happens in meditation when there is no Panchani Varana and so forth. Uh, I think uh, the Vedana always are indriya patibhadda that means uh, chakku sampasa that means uh, vedana arises when there is a contact through the eye ear nose tongue body and mind all these six are called indriya the faculties and when the senses this indriya indriya are called senses when the senses and sensory objects come together consciousness arise arises when these three are there contact arises combination of three tinna sangati phasso phasso pachya vedana so whatever feeling we experience they all are arising from these six senses six senses so you 
cannot have a feeling without six senses. Even when you are in meditation, even when our hindrances are no longer there, you still have feeling. That feeling is uh, due to mental contact. Mind contacts uh, some inner experience like absence of greed. You feel that there is no greed. Uh, when you have, uh, when you don't have uh, anger, you have experience of the absence of anger. That is a feeling, feeling uh, that uh, arises by mind contacting the space, the moment without anger. Like this, whenever the hindrances are no longer there, still we have feelings and this feeling is mind caused by the mind contact and their mind is one of the faculties one of the senses and therefore there is no feeling can you, you can have out of six senses so i i mentioned yesterday when we have feelings, we fully comprehend the feeling, understand the feeling, pay attention to feeling, and know how this feeling arises, how it fades away, disappears, how, how it vanishes. Sukhaṁ vedanaṁ vedya māno, sukhaṁ vedanaṁ vedya miti pajyānāti, etc. When the pleasant feeling is while feeling, present feeling, we become mindful of the pleasant feeling. Like this, we first know how feeling arises. There are four factors combined together for feeling to arise. Four factors are the sense, sensory object, consciousness, and contact. When these four factors are there, feeling is there. And this is how it happens in me. While I am meditating, while you are meditating, you experience this in this way. Your sense, sensory object, consciousness, contact and feeling arises. This is a feeling arises in you and then you can uh, infer or you can uh, compare the way you have feeling with how other people have feelings. They also need sense, sensory object, consciousness and feeling, uh, contact and feeling. So the way you experience feeling is the same other people also experience feelings. Their feeling arises exactly as my feeling arises. Although we don't say my feeling, their feelings, but anyway, when this uh, four factors combined together, feeling arises in this world, my world. Similarly, when those four factors combine together, the feeling arises in others' worlds, meaning other beings. And therefore, we want to see the way how the feeling arise, arises in us and them and others. And that is what you experience within you is internal, ajnatam. What others experience is bahidda, ajnata bahidda, in your feeling, in your feeling, and their feeling. And then you uh, become aware of the fact this feeling and that feeling, this feeling and that feeling, 
arise in the same way, they stay the same way, they pass away in the same way, and therefore, iti ajyattanga vedana su vedana nu pasi verati, bahidava vedana su vedana nu pasi verati, ajyatta bahidava vedana su vedana nu pasi verati. Being mindful of your feeling, the way how feeling arises in you, the way how the feeling arises in others, and then you can see that there is no difference between this feeling and that feeling. That is called ajyata bhaidha, comparing. I mention also we compare us with others in other ways. Those are the ways that increase our defilements. Like when we compare our, our achievement with theirs, uh, there is a conceit or uh, man uh, of, uh, of various categories uh, the uh, complex, superiority complex, inferiority complex or the comparative complex. These complexes arise in our mind, they are defilements. But in this way, we act, we compare us with others uh, according to the truth. The, uh, this is impersonal. Uh, the feeling uh, you experience will not make you proud, neither the feeling arises in the other person make, does not make that person proud, because feeling arises depending on these factors. When something is arising depending on these factors, there is no ownership. Uh, there is uh, no any particular uh, reason to hold on to it. We just want to see it exactly as it is, as it arises, as it passes away. And therefore, the feeling arises always through senses. Without senses, feeling does not arise. So, Indriya Patibhadda, uh, there is no any other feeling without Indriya Patibhadda. That is what I want to say. All the feelings are related to Indri. Indriya Patibhadda means depending on or related to or because of, or, of senses. And without senses, no feeling can arise. I hope I answered your question. Is there any other question? Yeah, we have about 17 more. Okay, what is, the, what is one of them? <laughs> okay. Um, Bhante, I was told that people who think a lot have a lot of craving. Uh, <coughs> may I know how thinking is related to craving? I know mental plurif uh, proliferation is not good for the practice as it creates kama. What is the link with craving? Yes, uh, uh, thinking, uh, you can increase craving or decrease craving. If you uh, think to increase your craving, then you perpetuate mental proliferation. If you use the thinking to reduce thinking, you reduce mental proliferation. Uh, these are relative things. That is why Samma Sankhapa, Samma Sankhapa is wholesome thinking. Wholesome thinking is thinking of uh, I mean, thought of letting go, nekkama uh, sankhapa, thought of metta, avyapada sankhapa, and uh, thought of uh, compassion, uh, uh, non-cruelty uh, thought. Uh, if we increase, if we think to increase our greed, to increase our hatred, to increase the thought of cruelty, then 
or even thought of confusion, we perpetuate mental proliferation or conceptual proliferation. So these are relative, dependently arising mental states. We can use it for reducing mental proliferation or increasing uh, mental proliferation. Uh, when we increase, decrease mental proliferation, we increase the wholesome side. Eventually, we will come to an en end of thinking uh, state, and then we experience the peace. Uh, so, therefore, wholesome thoughts eventually help us to get rid of unwholesome, and finally, even a wholesome thought will vanish from our mind when we attain liberation. Uh, so we cannot say thinking always increase our anger. There are uh, wholesome thought as well. Uh, if we have uh, distorted perception, tanna, mana, ditti, and so on, and then we increase our mental or conceptual proliferation. Uh, in Madhupindika uh, Sutta in Madhupindika, Venerable Mahakachana, uh, explain uh, unwholesome mental uh, and unwholesome thought, mental proliferation. It implies that we, if we don't have this mental proliferation, we have uh, wholesome thought like dependent origination is a wholesome mental thought and uh, some uh, sunk up is wholesome mental thought. And that is, uh, so we have to decide which kind of thoughts to be cultivated, which kind of thought not to. There also is uh, another discourse in Majjhimini Kaya called Dveda Vitakka Sutta, two kinds of thoughts, two kinds of thought, one wholesome, one unwholesome. Wholesome thought we cultivate, unwholesome thought we do not cultivate. Okay. Next one. Uh, this uh, yesterday you mentioned. Uh, yesterday you mentioned to remind ourselves uh, of Dhamma to be free from grief. Apart from chanting and meditation, what else can we do to be free from sadness? Is that kama tanha or self pity within me? Uh, yes, I mentioned, I like to mention again that uh, if we meditate on very honestly, sincerely, with uh, understanding, if we meditate on impermanence, I, I remember I mentioned. Uh, uh, the various categories of feeling, uh, feeling pleasant, unpleasant, neutral. Pleasant, worldly feeling, unpleasant, worldly feeling. Worldly feeling means the feeling with uh, greed, hatred, and delusion. Unworldly feeling is uh, without greed, hatred, and delusion. Pleasant feeling can have greed, hatred, and delusion. Pleasant feeling can have without greed, hatred, and delusion. Unpleasant feeling can have greed, hatred, and delusion. Unpleasant feeling can have without greed, hatred, and delusion. Neither pleasant nor unpleasant feeling can have worldly feeling or greed, hatred, and delusion. Neither pleasant nor unpleasant, nor unpleasant feeling can have without greed, hatred, and delusion. Those thoughts, uh, feelings that don't have greed, hatred, and delusion called 
unworldly or thought of uh, renunciation. So, when we see all of them, even the pleasant feelings, is changing, impermanent, and uh, then even grief, you can see, is not permanent, although you may feel the grip of grief. Uh, like sometimes people have a, a migraine headache. That time they have a lot of pain. Of course, uh, uh, they take all kind of medications and so forth. At the same time, they must understand that even this so-called painful gripping, excruciating pain with migraine headache, that headache is impermanent. That gives you comfort, solace, and uh, some peace. And therefore, knowing the truth, you can reduce your grief. Knowing the truth, you can reduce your grief. You may feel the pain, uh, but you will not be sort of devastating. So, right. Uh, okay, thank you, Bhante. Mm -hmm. I think this one will be very quick. Dear Bhante, with the way I am progressing in my meditation, I feel I am not going to be enlightened in this life. So, is it unwholesome to have a wish to be born into a life that I may continue my practice of the Dhamma. Now, don't think that you cannot attain any state of uh, enlightenment in this life. Don't think that way. You simply keep practicing. Uh, what will happen at the end uh, will happen, whether you wish it or not. But what you have to do is to do what you are supposed to do now. Uh, Buddha said, Ajeva kichang atapam kojanya maranasve. Whatever we are supposed to do now, we just do that. When you do that, one day perhaps you might, you might change your mind. You may, you know, sometimes uh, you may get very close to attain even the first level of enlightenment. Until such time, you must have a hope and a very firm commitment. Once you think, oh, I cannot attain enlightenment, you become complacent, lethargic. You just become lazy. I cannot do it. Next life. As soon as you have this thought, you are becoming uh, sort of, uh, people say that you go uh, one step forward and two step backward. So sometimes people turn around and say, why not you go backward? You go, you know, so that you can move. That is not going to happen when you med meditate. You have to make a commitment, determination, uh, perseverance, with sincerity, honesty, you try to practice. Keep practicing, 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 until you die. Then what will happen will happen after your death. You don't have to worry about it. Bhante, the second part of that question was, um, is it unwholesome to desire finding the Dhamma, to, to desire to uh, come upon the Dhamma in the next life? I know we chant this uh, every day here. Yes. Uh, what do you call it? We don't chant that way. We chant, Yesanta uh, Nehina Dhamma, uh, Yava Nibbana Toma, Nasantu Sabbada Yeva, Yata Jato Bhave Bhave. That means, may all uh, desires in me, wherever it arises, I, in my in this mind, if unwholesome mental state like greed, craving arises, 
whenever and wherever it arises, we don't say next life. Yatta jato bhave bhave. Bhave means happening. Bhave here means uh, it, it happens. We actually in this later on when we come to that uh, in the, in the uh, dependent origination uh, continuation. Uh, yatta jato bhave bhave. Uh, we should not uh, translate as uh, whenever next future lives appear, I want to reduce this greed. No. Whenever, as uh, we say, ya yang tanna pono bhavika nandiraha sagata tatra tatra vina, that is the nature of desire. Desire arises and we delight in it. Again it arises, we delight in it. So, whenever it arises, greed arises, then and there we must get rid of, we must try to reduce it. Yatta jato bhave bhave. We never uh, recite to be born again and again. Uh, whenever it arises, it arises so many millions of times in this life. And therefore, uh, have confidence, faith in your practice and you just practice that uh, that is your Dhamma practice and that is your love for Dhamma dedicated to Dhamma live in accordance with Dhamma seeing rising and falling is Dhamma seeing dependent origination is Dhamma practice that is what we have to do uh, don't try to attain enlightenment next life. Uh, then, as soon as it, it is just like uh, when you aim for the f f goal or first prize, when you aim for the first prize, you may even end up in the second or even third. If you aim at third, you will get nothing. <laughs> Therefore, aim at the first prize and keep practicing. Uh, then uh, you at least might get second or third. So enlightenment, uh, don't postpone, don't think of attaining next life or life after that and so forth. Uh, in this life, keep practicing, no matter what. That is what I recommend to do. <coughs> Another question. Thank you, Bhante. Uh, I'm taking two questions that are very similar, very related. It has to do with uh, uh, anger and unwholesome feelings. Bhante, you have mentioned both unwholesome and wholesome desires. Is there any type of anger that is wholesome, such as what is sometimes called in the West righteous indignation? There's another person that wants to know how do we pay attention, how do we stay informed with the news, uh, with compassion toward the injustices in the world, and uh, uh, and not get carried away in anger. I think without getting angry, we can take. Uh, uh, if you like to watch news, uh, you must understand. In the news, you will always see three things: examples of greed, hatred, and delusion. All the news you see, all the news bring are the examples of greed, hatred, and delusion. Then you can think, these people who commit so many crimes, doing so many injustices, doing so many uh, unwise, foolish things, are confused, they are full of greed, hatred and delusion. Therefore, you wish them to be free from greed, hatred and delusion. Uh, 
recently, you know, very most the uh, known uh, factor that the whole world uh, watched one uh, video of a policeman uh, 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 strangling uh, a man to death. That is uh, shocking, as that is so unfair, very cruel, brutal thing. And yet we must understand that policeman is not pure, clean, with the clean, pure statement. That policeman himself has a greed, hatred and delusion. So long as he and us have greed, hatred and delusion, anything of this can, nature can, can be expected. And therefore we have to understand the Dhamma, the truth. When we practice metta, we must send metta to him also, because uh, how much he suffers now, how much he suffers in future, he does not know that. He is ignorant. This is what we call ignorance. And therefore, uh, we should not pollute our mind uh, cultivating anger or hatred. We keep our mind clean and pure. We must try to stay above all this. That is how we must train ourselves. We must think in a more mature, more insightful way and more wisely we must think this is the nature of greed, hatred and delusion. Getting angry is not the solution. Therefore, we don't say that there is a just anger, righteous anger and so forth. We don't have that kind of uh, definition for anger or interpretation of anger. I think, friends, this may be enough for this morning's questions. I'm glad you asked me so many questions and sorry that we don't have uh, time to answer all these questions. Uh, so we keep asking and I try to answer them within this limited time. Okay, <clears throat> now friends, we practice meditation, metta meditation. We practice it unconditionally to share our metta with everybody, all living beings. Now particularly people People who suffer from this COVID-19 and uh, they, some of them passed away, some of them are still suffering and we want them to be free from suffering and return to recover uh, and then return to normal health. And as I mentioned in answering the question earlier, there are some who have lost their loved ones. Uh, since we have not attained enlightenment, we have attachment to our loved ones. Then somebody passes away, grief arises, and people begin to grieve. Not one or two, but millions of people all over the world. And we want them to understand Dhamma and be free from uh, their grief and return to their normal health and continue their meditation to be more uh, comfortable and have peace. And uh, there are people who are trying to help the grief-stricken people, sick people, uh, people like doctors, nurses, in hospital staffs, they all are dedicated their life to this, their service, and we want them to be healthy and peaceful and continue their wonderful selfless service. There are others who are trying to find out a vaccine. Eventually they will, sooner the better, and may they have courage 
and determination to continue their work. And there are others who are doing financial support in many ways. May they also be may continue their generosity and compassion. There are leaders who are trying to find solution and help people. Some of them are very wise and they make wise decisions, <laughs> compassionate decisions with understanding. And those who do not have that much uh, uh, wisdom, we want them to have wisdom, understanding, compassion, patience to make right decisions to help these people and all of them be free from suffering and attain liberation. With this uh, metta thought, this benediction, I want to end this morning session. Thank you. Thank you for participating.